CBS 4's Brian Andrews joins us now. Brian. Rick and Cynthia, the video and diary excerpts were released by prosecutors as part of the discovery process for Derek Medina's lawyers who are preparing his defense. You are about to see portions of that surveillance tape and read parts of Jennifer Alfonso's diary. Do they paint the picture of a woman who pushed her husband to murder, as he has claimed, or do they paint her as any other woman in a struggling marriage, just dealing with the good and the bad? In video obtained by the Miami Herald from prosecutors, you see a scuffle in the kitchen and Jennifer Alfonso hitting Derek Medina. Then you see him leave and return with a gun that's not seen on the video. Moments later, a swirl of gunpowder as he allegedly shoots her six to eight times. Next, you see him get his jacket and phone, return to take the now infamous Facebook photo of her body, and then leave the townhouse. Later, you see police officers entering the home and discovering the situation. Prosecutors also released pages from Jennifer's diary titled The Mind of an Insane Woman, dot, dot, dot. In it, she talks about ghosts in the townhouse they shared. I feel something here with us, she writes. She also wrote about being a sourpuss, not always the happiest camper. Makes me wonder if it's really love holding us together, she wrote. Jennifer goes on to write she's thinking about reading the Bible and that she can't sleep thinking about her unhappy husband and zombies. Jennifer writes about the Miami cannibal where a homeless man had his face chewed off by a naked man high on drugs. I've always believed in zombies and stuff. Let's see how many others will have human on the menu, she wrote. Clearly, it was a marriage in trouble. She talked about being jealous when Derek would look at other women while they were out shopping. Uncontrollably jealous, like want to murder type deal. She said my blood boiled and that she wanted to rip his eyes right out of the socket. Her writings go on to say, if I let you, you would make me destroy myself. She questioned her husband's faithfulness. He didn't even do anything out of the ordinary. He was just being Derek. And one day I woke up and said, you know what? I think he's cheating on me. Don't know why. And then there were these chilling words. When we love each other, it's great. But when we hate each other, we hate each other. Derek Medina has pleaded not guilty to second degree murder, but he faces indictment on first degree murder in the next few weeks. We're going to have to wait to see if the judge will allow Jennifer's diary excerpts to be admitted into evidence against him. I'm Brian Andrews, CBS 4 News tonight. CBS 4's Brian Andrews is live at Kendall Regional Medical Center with all these details. Brian? Well, this is where the surviving driver is being treated tonight by doctors at the trauma center. At last check, Miami-Dade cops were still looking for the driver of this black SUV, which incidentally had an advertisement on the rear windshield for an adult stripper delivery service. Uh, nonetheless, people who live in this West Perrine neighborhood are very concerned. They are taking issue tonight with the version of events as painted by the Miami-Dade Police Department. A mangled sedan, a crumpled SUV, evidence markers, police tape, and tears shed under umbrellas. Family members say Monica Patterson was killed in the accident. She was a passenger in the red sedan, struck by a black SUV police say they were surveilling in the area, not chasing. She just turned 55. Your mother. Yeah, she just turned 55. Oh, yeah, she has five. Under umbrellas in the rain, Patterson's family dealt with the immediate aftermath and consoled each other. One relative falling to the ground in tears. A woman overcome with emotion, needing to be helped back to her feet. To me, the right questions that need to be asked is why was why wasn't those sirens on? Why they was while they was chasing another car. My mom is very lovely. I, mean, I def definitely wouldn't want to lose my mom to something like this. But Miami-Dade police say this was not a chase. Investigators do not believe any type of pursuit was going on prior to the accident. But witnesses are telling a different story. It was a police chase. The black unmarked cars. No siren, no lights, no nothing. It was a police chase. But the two black cars were chasing the big car. And they hit the... Uh, Smaller car. It was two black cars, police officers. They never stopped. Witnesses also claimed the police ran after the people who got out of the SUV and never stopped to help the women injured in the sedan. The only thing I could do was just go over there and, and say a prayer. And one lady passed away. Unfortunately, we probably could have did more if they had to stop and see about the individual people that was hurt. 
So still tonight, a lot of questions. Was it a police chase? The police department says no. Others say it was. We have one woman who lost her life. We have another who is clinging to life here at the trauma center in Kendall. And somewhere out there is the guy behind the wheel of that black SUV. Reporting live from Kendall, I'm Brian Andrews, CBS4 News Tonight. Thank you, Brian. Coming up.